Please welcome Rebecca Ulias, being streamed in from China, and Max Simoleski presenting uh, Speculative Network Topologies Modeling Futurity. Please welcome them. Hi. Um, I just want to thank you all for being here. I'm Max Simoleski. I am a PhD student, a media theorist, historian, and writer uh, at CMAC at Duke University. And my co-conspirator, Rebecca Ulias, is a media artist um, and theorist also at CMAC. For the next several minutes, I want you to sit back, hold open your mind, and imagine a diagram. It's an image, it's not quite a representation, because it's a simplification, an abstraction. This talk describes the topology of that diagram, that it is thus also a brief and speculative history of its mutations and a sketch of its enduring characteristics and critical resistances. Imagine with us a diagram we'll refer to as node system network. A system is a set of interconnected nodes. Node systems form the topological surfaces of the network in graphological space. Their topology refers to the continuous relation of node and edge, whether in centralized, decentralized, or distributed forms. They're like a holy trinity, node, system, network, mutually defining point, point, and edge. The blooming outward of a lattice work with regions of connective intensity, and with each node even, exists a cascading network of systems pulsing with vibratory force even at the most minute level. Node system network reflexively reverberating with the shape of one another, but also representing different scales encapsulating one another. The jump between these scales is not unlike the fold in cybernetics from the second order to the third. The close and observable by dynamic system, the object which then enfolds its observer, bringing the relational event of apprehension into the frame, making the environment itself a problem and unmaking object and observer in the process. Still within the logic of node system network, which was a diagram and also a very specific way of seeing. Node system network will stand in here as just one diagram of our technological present, but perhaps the dominant one. In any event, one well attended to. What forces shape and rent the topology of this network graph imaginary? And what relation do these topologies have to the real? How is this diagram intersected with other diagrams and other persistent forms of sociality? relations of property, of labor, of bodies and things. We're interested in a particular moment in which the node system network diagram became both a base and a contested terrain for artists, activists, and radical technologists who saw human freedom in the possibility of hypersocial connection that it promised. They sought to recuperate its logics for other ends. And so we also reject the idealism behind the notion that because they lie outside of human perception, contemporary computationally inflected network logics exist somehow beyond human understanding. Remembering as well that questions of knowledge are also questions of power. The limits shaping our apprehension here are always only a problem of incommensurable temporalities or incommensurable scales. This diagram is not a map, but a flawed working model bridging this incommensurability. It is also a hypothesis about how a certain set of diagrams have historically intersected the known and inflected the knowable, and how this epistemological force comes to mediate the real via the senses through their organization, as well as through the organization and coordination of bodies and resources in space. The abstract diagram is still a real productive force. We wonder with Juliana Bruno how, quote, the surfaces we call skin, fabric, canvas, wall, screen, positively shape our culture, generating contact, connectivity, and communication. I'm quoting Bruno here at length. These are sites that are able to hold their structure, substantial forms of haptic material experience. Their superficial texture is touchable and therefore touching, and it can even convey material relations, creating forms of encounter. This tangible, superficial contact, in fact, is what allows us to apprehend the objects and the spaces of art, turning contact in the communicative interface of a public intimacy. That's the end of that quote. We thus wonder, working from model to real and back again, both what this diagram has produced and how it has been resisted through its very terms, and then how we might diagram differently. We'll start first with a little history. We're gonna make a leap down in scale that is also a leap back in time. The analog of the node is the cell, the circle, the hearth, the dwelling, the walled city. 
also secretly the womb and the egg, but the diagram tends to hide the stains of its birth. In Foucault's version of the medieval city, there are two main problems posed historically subsequent to one another. First, the leper, the madman, the singular aberrant, and the solution to this problem is to exclude. Here we meet our first enduring characteristic of the node system network, the cut. The city's walls perform this function of defining outside from inside, which cascades in turn into a series of other binary oppositions between the sane and the mad, the clean and the unclean, the ordered and the disordered, the rational and the irrational, the known and the unknown. I could go on. This primary dyad of in, out, intersecting with others, reproducing the violence of differentiation in myriad social, institutional, and physical forms. The other problem for the city is the plague, which is a problem not of exclusion, but of circulation, and a recognition as well that the one is also a many. The plague is about what cannot be excluded, what comes right inside, one way or another, and must be dealt with. Michael, Michel Serres was right to emphasize the transformational role of the pest, through the metaphor of the rat, which carries the bacterium of the plague. The rat always gets in, and it must. It's about what's internal to the city, its organization, and the movement of knowledge and bodies within it. And so the problem of the plague is also a productive one, and one that is never really solved. The second enduring mode, which we will shorthand with the parasite, the virus. What could not be excluded is incorporated and made room for. The management of contagion and circulation became a new model of conscious governance of the body politic and the bodies within. It was an incorporation. The notion of the corporation should remind us that the concept of the body of coordinated bodies suffuses our language. The city node itself is a system of bodies, of nodes, those bodies, each containing systems of their own. This system of bodies intersects at points with other emerging and enduring diagrams, logics of coordination. The specter of capital emerges here with particular salience, as well as the psyche. The logic coordinates inward as well as outward. The problem of coordination of bodies becoming one also of behavior, of each node managing the system that is internal to it. A contradiction, a coordination of a set of systems that becomes internalized. The logics of exclusion also working on the surfaces of bodies and working inside creating something less than solid called a soul, and something a little more solid but squishy called a human. Though the lines that demarcate the inside and outside of these categories are constantly shifting. Coordination then, but also pattern recognition and identification, separating kinds of bodies on an ever more molecular level, and systematically coordinating bodies into the service of larger systems of social organization. For this body must be trained, and here we point to the series of node system dyads. The citizen and the nation, the psychic individual and the family unit, the worker and the factory, the consumer and the marketplace. The development of mass media networks of modernity multiplied these sites of training into ever more intimate domains. The diagram of node system network cannot be collapsed onto the social diagram or system of relations that is materialized and naturalized in capitalism. But we do want to note their enduring conjunction, and quite significantly in their conjunction in the production of self-owning subjects. The notion of free will and the body it possesses, and the chain of possession that follows from it. The mind-body dualism hewing again to the mode of exclusion or the cut. It is this very product, homo economicus, the individual self-made, that is undergoing a series of parasitic mutations in and through the notion of the post-human and the globally networked society emerging in the second half of the past century. Catherine Hales has referred to this as the moment when, quote, information lost its body into a version of the human that can be seamlessly articulated with intelligent machines. The operative mode of power is no longer enclosure, but modulation. Gilles Deleuze called it the shift from disciplinary societies to the societies of control. In any event, the logic of, the, of such, a subject, as such a subject is such that subjectivity itself is understood as dissipated into information, data, a series of behaviors, of drives, of desires. This is a subject theoretically liberated from the body, but quite importantly, no less formed on the logic of the mind-body cut, and, the more mediated, and all the more mediated through screen, language, and image. The body becomes a prosthesis for the in informationally modulated subject. For some, the informational data attached to this prosthetic body and its images are now sites of creative potential, of entrepreneurial investment. For other bodies, 
these data are a death sentence. It is also right at this moment of the birth of the globally networked society in the post-World War II period that a series of critical radical resistances, resistances sought to hijack network media infrastructures from their conjunction with capital and put new media to different ends. In Italy, the autonomia movement sought to produce new forms of radical subjectivity through Radio Alice, a local citizen radio movement built through the appropriation of a range of signal frequency using a former military transmitter. The founders of Radio Alice would go on to create Orfo TV and found the Telestreet movement, free television created from a similar notion of local autonomous broadcast. These localized forms provided radical alternatives to the kinds of subjective inculcation and education that its creators saw happening in the mainstream media. Imagine a riot on the streets of Bologna, the streets filled with the sounds of rock music broadcast from hundreds of personal radios. In the words of one of Radio Alice's founders, Giancarlo Ambrogio Vitale, they have built a huge machine of domination over the human mind. Someone may, must make available to all of the tiny vessels to escape in a thousand directions. It wasn't about resisting the media so much as turning its affordances to other ends, against itself, using its holes, working like a parasite, remolding the dominant and differentiating mode of the node system network diagram in the process. In the US at the time, a similar re-diagramming of the dominant network logics through media infrastructural through the media infrastructures was underway with the Ant Farm Collective. Originally trained as architects, the members of Ant Farm saw the radical potential in the Sony Portapak video camera and the mobility enabled by the Interstate Highway Network, another defense project. They wanted to set up way stations along the interstate for the production of a nationwide citizen video movement. They used their architectural skills to build the prototype of a media van to travel that highway, outfitted for the everyday individual to produce, edit, and locally broadcast their own network content. They built the idea of an open source before we were speaking of source code, publishing maps, blueprints, and instructions through an ad hoc and, grass, ad hoc and grassroots publications like Radical Software. Again, it was not the media network itself, but the logics of the dominant network diagram that they sought to undo by putting production into the hands of the traditional consumer. These are two of just some of the very many critical projects that emerged at this moment when our media, when our media technological president was forming. When the topology of the diagram we're referring to mutated into its post-human form. Like the parasite, some of these modes of critical resistances to the dominant media paradigms through the media themselves were recuperated again for other purposes. The citizen producer of media content became the you and YouTube and we're now all armed with an even more miniaturized version of the Sony Porta Pack in our pockets, with the potential for sharing content fully integrated into the handheld device. Moreover, the hypersociality mentioned, imagined in these sharing networks of producer consumers has been subsumed into the network diagram at its intersection with capital, as media corporations have found a way to profit off the data mining of not primarily the content we produce, but the attention we give to it and the sociality that we generate by sharing it with each other. So how do we speculate a future beyond the dominant diagram? And further, how do we think beyond its historically shifting topology of exclusion, parasitic resistance, and recuperation? We in this room tend to inhabit the parasitic spaces that exist underneath, alongside of, and against this dominant mode. But how does this edge node logic continue to shape the contours of our conception of what, other diagram, what another diagram could look like? Our contention is that it may be through the reimagining of a network not based on the logic of the node and edge of individual and relation. We agree with Tiziana Terranova, that the form of the diagram itself as it intersects with the historical formation of capitalism through the social network, both reproduces and naturalizes the economic logic of capitalism's version of social life, understood as quote, the fabric of relations between networked and entrepreneurial selves. This produces an underlying and unquestioned diagram of the social as a variable network of nodes and edges. What would it mean to think outside of this basic node edge logic, replete as it is in our conceptual and material worlds? What would a diagram of the social network look like based instead on blobs and flows with fissures, rents, and holes? Instead of edges, would a relational model more like a Mobius strip do justice to the queer entanglements of physical and digital intimacy? How can our relational models more fully represent the myriad forms of connection and intimacy that animate our communities? What does it mean to think networked relations on a model of love and care rather than trust, security, or privacy? 
What if instead of a network envisioned in diagrammatics, we could imagine a network built on poetics? We started this imaginary by historicizing the node edge as a diagrammatic form in order to denaturalize it. And we hope to have, in the meantime, opened our minds to the radical potential of imagining otherwise. Thank you. So yeah, does anyone have any questions? <laughs> There's maybe a lot to unpack, but <laughs> or comments? Okay. Hi, Max. Thank you very much for that. I'm really excited to, to hear you speak here in, in Berlin. Um, so something you said towards the end, this is not a question, obviously. Uh, um, maybe just to kind of think, think with you on this last thought that you had about the Mobius strip and sort of entanglements. Um, so last night I was just, I picked up Keller Easterling's extra state, statecraft, which I know that you know, and was thinking about sort of infrastructures, because I was trying to think beyond the stack, the network, the pipeline, the, you know, these, these sorts of forms of thinking. And I just sort of opened the book randomly to this place where she talks about dispositions and affordances. It's not just about changing like how we think beyond the node and the edge, but what are the affordances or the disposition or the potentiality that exists in those forms which makes other things possible? So the question as I was, that I was left with was, um, how does that, and um, it's not a question to you obviously, it's a rhetorical question I guess, um, um, what, what needs to change in that? Like how do you just say we don't need to think about this network anymore if we want to have other kinds of poetics entanglements in it? What is that? Something has to break and is breaking um, if we want to change what the affordance is. Um, so I just kind of wanted your kind of response to that. Um, we're hearing a lot about care and uh, the illogics of love and, you know, these kinds of things. And it just kind of, it sounds great, but uh, I want to know how to, uh, how we move that project forward. Right. Thanks. Um, I think this is a really interesting question. So this, this talk and this, this piece is, is sort of a work in progress. We're hoping to kind of build it up by, by working from an actual image database um, that we build rather than that, that we can then live edit um, as we work with it. But um, part of where we started thinking from was the visual centric model of the diagram. Like, and, and it's preponderance in Western culture of the visual centric. And, and even in our imagining of the internet, I mean, it's all vision, right? The primary mode of human sensory, like the first sense that you get is not vision, it's touch. It's in the womb. You have that sense first. You don't develop vision until like a few weeks into your being alive, right? So the first thing you have is actually touch. But the visual centric is so connected to our idea of like what an individual is um, and like the diagramming of space, right? Um, so I think part of it is sort of taking back from the visual centric logic, realizing how much it, it shapes how we understand thought itself, how we understand ourselves as human. Um, and so that's kind of, I mean, that would be like sort of my first kind of push at that would be to say, I mean, even in Keller, Keller Easterling's work, of course, is about infrastructure. So like diagramming and looking at visual models is really important for, for Keller's work, but I think that um, I think that my, one of my first steps would be a, like as an artist and thinking from like a, like a writing and poetic perspective is to sort of push against the visual centric. I think someone earlier today mentioned that um, when we were talking about radio signals mentioned that uh, the amazing thing about sound is that it's actually a touch sense as well. Um, and that is a primary sense. And that, so that's, that's another way of, of kind of thinking too like, like uh, a radio signal is just like existing in the airwaves and a lot of what we're working with is actually like touchable, it's here, it's with us, right? Um, and so how do we think of models of connectivity that exist more in the way of like sound waves um, instead of these like routed pathways that are, are visual and are physical? Oops. Any other questions or comments? Okay, thank you so much. And um, yeah, that also concludes Radical Networks for 2018. So stay tuned for 2019. <laughs>
And uh, just once again, would like to thank Spectrum. Um, would like. <laughs> would like to thank um, Ryan Taylor of Fighting the Internet <laughs> while we try to do our live stream. Um, we, we will, um, even for the talks where the internet kind of um, got in the way of the live stream, we, we, we have been recording all the talks, so they will end up, they will, they will all end up online at one point. Um, and as well, I want to thank all of our volunteers. Um, who we could not do this without. And once again, all the participants, artists, uh, performers, everyone for just coming uh, to share their work with us and to, to make the journey here for those that came from outside of Berlin. Thank you all so much for coming because, um, I mean, we like set up the framework, but you come in and give us all of the information and the energy and the joy. So thank you so much to all of you. And, um, and yeah, and we'll see you next year. Thank you.